Hello, welcome to the Road to Episode 7, my ongoing series where I chart the road to the release of Star Wars Episode 7 in 2015. And today I want to weigh in on a rumour that's going around this week that Ian McDermott might reprise or reprise, however you want to say it, his role as the Emperor, as Palpatine in Star Wars Episode 7. Now, whether it's a substantial or unsubstantial rumour, I don't really know. I mean, I've just seen it reported on a few websites that uh, it's a rumour that's going around. Of course, we know that, um, or you now know that Ian McDermott has said in the past that he would be very, very open to um, playing the role of the Emperor again, whether it be in an, another movie or in a TV series. However, whichever way the media kind of um, uh, wants it, um, not to say that he would, you know, do it at the drop of a hat. Obviously, I'm sure he would consider it in, in terms of how good it is and if it's right and everything. Because of course, Ian McDermott. He's not really a very prolific film actor, he's more of a theatre actor. He hasn't really done a, a, a major film since uh, Revenge of the Sith, which is, you know, by the time Episode 7 comes out, that'll be 10 years. So, will he will he come back is one question. I think he will. But two, would it even happen? And that's what, what I really want to talk about, because to me it's exciting, but it's also maybe a bad move. And again, this is the first time I've really made a video on com complete and pure speculation but I wanted to get my thoughts in on it in case it does happen or it doesn't who you know who knows now here's my kind of my two cases for this one it'll be great if Ian McDermott returns as the Emperor why well one uh, he is a great actor and I think he really just relishes the role of Palpatine and um, especially in episode 3 and Return the Jedi he is fantastic in that role and I always thought, after Return of the Jedi, man, I wish we'd see more of the Emperor in Episode 4 and 5. You know, he was just such a great character, and we only saw him, you know, really, uh, in his full kind of form in the last movie. But I guess it worked for what it was, and I was completely satisfied with the way Return of the Jedi ended. But I always felt like it would have been cool to see more of that character, and we did in the prequels. I think the one thing, the one thing that you, can, uh, you can't really take away from the prequels, whether you hate them or you love them, or, if you, or specifically if you do hate them, I should say, uh, the one thing you can't take away from it is the fact that Ian McDermott is fantastic in all three of those films. His character is written brilliantly and he performs it brilliantly. Him and Ewan McGregor really carry that prequel trilogy from being a complete disaster in terms of, in terms of most people's perception, although I guess a lot of people do think it is a complete disaster. I don't, that's another story that I've told before and I'll probably tell again. But my point is that he was brilliant in, that, in those prequel films, um, particularly in episode 3. Now, to a certain degree he hams it up a bit, but that just kind of adds to the, the juiciness of the role and just the, uh, the fun of, of seeing that character on screen being so just deliciously evil. And it was great to see. So we got that. We got more of the Emperor. Do we need more? Hmm. I would say, and this is my, 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 my strongest point for it, is that it's going to be so hard. The single hardest thing for them to do in this new Star Wars film, in this new Star Wars trilogy, continuing the episodic format of the six films that have gone before it, is to introduce a villain that will be as iconic and as great as a Darth Vader, as a Palpatine, you know? Um, in episode one, they, they kind of had a, a great looking and mem memorable kind of looking villain in Darth Maul. He was cool, he had the double lightsaber, not much substance to him. In episode two, we had Count Dooku, played by Christopher Lee, and that was great, you know, there wasn't much to that character really, but Christopher Lee is always awesome, so it was cool to see, but again, it wasn't really like, oh my god, that was amazing. In episode three, really the villain was Anakin, and we had, of course, General Grievous, who was a cool character, but again, um, I'd say my favourite of the villains, you know, the big villains in the prequel films, um, but ultimately, you know, there's not really kind of... In 20 years time we're not going to be saying oh my god General Grievous one of the best film villains of all time and I think Star Wars really needs that it really needs the iconic villain that you can see the outline of it and know who it is and just it needs to be played by an amazing actor whether it's going to be a physical role or whether it's going to be a role that CGI or however, however they do it they need a great actor behind that role and they need a great character so that, I think, is going to be the hardest challenge, and to bring back the Emperor would certainly remedy that, because it's an established character. Ian McDermott is a fantastic actor, you know, and it's a fantastic character itself, so it could definitely work. And there's plenty of ways to justify it, you know, to think that the, the most powerful Dark Jedi in generations has come along, and over the course of 30, 40 years has taken over the galaxy, 
and then all of a sudden this broken down kind of Darth Vader manages to kill him just by picking him up and throwing him off the edge. Yes, I mean, it, it totally worked for Return of the Jedi, and in a way it was the perfect ending to that story. To bring the Emperor back would definitely be tarnishing that, but it depends how they do it, if they ever did it. But I would say that it would definitely remedy the fact that um, they, they wouldn't have to come up with a, a brand new amazing villain. But against him being in the film, why I'm against it is because I think the reward of creating a new villain, creating a new iconic uh, threat into the Star Wars universe in these films, in this new trilogy, I think the reward of getting that right would be so much better than merely bringing the Emperor back. So for me, I would love to see it happen as a fan of the characters, a fan of the actors, a fan of the series, and you know they could easily just justify it. There were the, the books where he was cloned. I think that was a bit of a cheat, really. But at the same time, they could do that, or they could say that you know he prepared for this, that you know he didn't die when he fell down into the shaft. I don't know. There's there's so many different things they could do with it. It's in a, in a universe like Star Wars, it's easy to justify something like that. But at the same time, I think honestly, it'd be great if they really put their heads together and came up with something really cool, but I think it's going to be so tough to do that. So yeah, that was my thoughts on Ian McDermott possibly returning to the Star Wars series. Hey, I'd love to see it in a standalone movie, I'd love to see it in a different kind of context in a series. Um, but you know, I'm on the fence, I guess you could say. Something I would really love, if they were going to do it, if they were going to put the Emperor in the new Star Wars film, I would say don't have him in the first, in episode 7, right? Don't announce him, don't say he's in it, don't put him on the cast list on IMDb, nothing. Do whatever you want to do with episode 7, then right at the end, the last shot of the film, you introduce him and there he is cackling or something like that. Boom, credits, he's going to be in episode 8, so that would be amazing. Um, one of my favourite uh, endings to a film. Not that I love the series that much, they, they're okay, but the Pirates of the Caribbean film. In fact, I might spoil things if you haven't seen the Pirates film, but let's just say the end of... Um, Dead Man's Chest is brilliant, so something like that would be really awesome. Um, but I, I, I honestly think they won't do it. I think that would be going too far and, and relying on the past too much. And I think they will see it as more of a reward for creating something new and hitting it out of the park with that uh, in mind. They definitely need to do a lot of that as well as respecting the past and doing all that kind of stuff. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. back to the road to episode 7, my ongoing series where I chart the road to release. <coughs> Let's try that one again. Hello, welcome to the road to episode 7, my ongoing series that charts the road to the... <laughs> There's a lot more kind of substance to that kind of thing. And this one again is kind of like that, but um, I, I, I'm not quite sure of its uh, val validity. So, but I wanted to comment on it because it's really interesting. And I'm going to start this video over again because I don't like the way I've done it so far. Hi!